Baruch Adonai Eloheinu. Blessed is the Lord, and God bless you. And we are so um, happy that you're able to join us this morning. Uh, let's just join together in in prayer before the Lord. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that we're able to come on your Shabbat, on your Sabbath, to be able to worship you and to be able to give glory to your name and to esteem this day, dear God, as a holy day unto you, Father. We love you and we thank you for you and all that you do for us, dear God. Bless each one that is able to be here today, Lord. And bless those that will be able to listen a little later, Father, that it might be a blessing to them. We ask this, Beshem Yahshua Mashiach, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you all, and it is uh, good to get to be here with you. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Sabbath, keeping of the Sabbath, and um, although I'm not going to go into every aspect, uh, there's so many aspects that we could go into on the, uh, regarding the Sabbath. Uh, why keep it? Why not keep it? Why has Sunday come to be uh, the day that is uh, accepted by uh, practically every denominational church there is in the world? Uh, but that's, uh, I wanted to do this mainly because we do a Shabbat service and this Shabbat service that we do live here on live stream, there are those of you that will be watching on YouTube, you can always come along live on live stream. There is a link on our website. Uh, the new one's always posted uh, by Brother Aaron every uh, before the Sabbath comes so that you can come and listen to the, to, the, to the service live. And we started this service for the sake of those people that would write us and ask us, um, Brother Steve, what do you do on the Sabbath, and uh, and and how do you keep it? Because we go to church on Sunday, but we can't find a place to go that's uh, that keeps the Sabbath in the areas that we live in. Um, so we decided to include you in the service that we do here. Uh, and if you do your own service, then that's okay. You don't have to worry about being here. There's no requirement by no means, but. At the same token, what we wanted to do, though, is there were some that would write, that would speak about that they still wanted to keep the Sabbath and they wanted to be part of some kind of Sabbath service, but yet they're not, uh, they're, they, they're going to church on Sunday. Well, I don't discourage you from going to church wherever you may be going to church at. Do that. You know, because, see, you can keep the Sabbath whether or not you attend a church or not. You can still keep it. Because the day is a day that is set aside by God to be a holy day. But if you want to worship the Lord on another day as well, then praise God. you got two days that you worship the Lord. So I'm not against that. But I want to start off this morning, though. Let's take, I'd like to show you how that the Sabbath actually began. How this took place to start with. Where did Sunday come into the whole equation? And some people think it's from the Bible, but it's not. And I'm going to share some of those things with you. And, excuse me, in 321 um, CE, the Common Era, or after the uh, uh, death of Christ, uh, it'd be AD for some people, uh, Constantine, who was the Roman emperor of, of that day, um, he took and he made this declaration, and this is actually the words that he spoke. He says, on the venerable day of the sun, that's S-U-N, by the way, let the magistrates and the peoples residing in the cities rest. Um, and let all workshops be closed in the country, however... And then he goes into those that are farmers. You do not have to keep this day if it is something because of the planting that the gods would bless. See? Uh, now, you have to remember, Constantine did not become a quote-unquote Christian until after, or excuse me, right at his deathbed. This is when he did his conversion, is when he was dying. But the Sunday began as a result of Constantine's own word, and he wasn't even a quote-unquote Christian at that time. He's just 
still a pagan, and he sets this up based on the sun god. And he said, let everything be closed during that time. That's kind of interesting because the Vatican is doing a new push right now. Even Israel is considering allowing for Sunday to be a day that everything is closed in Israel in honor of what the Catholic Church is pressing. I know uh, in the EU they're pressing this as well. The United States uh, uh, is also looking to take this up. Why? The Vatican's influence is very strong, and they're trying to press this around the world. Now, here's where it came up in the Catholic Church. And this was in 325, uh, four years later, uh, 325 BCE, the bishops declared, Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday. See, this is how bad the Catholic Church has always hated the Jews. They just called it Judaizing. He says, so Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday, but shall work on that day. But the Lord's day they shall uh, especially honor as being Christians shall, if all possible, do not work on that day. If, however, they are found Judaizing, they shall be shut out from Christ. In other words, shut out from the church, not from Yeshua, not from Mashiach. You see, so everything was, had become, in those early days there, everything had just become a, um, what would you put it, this was just a, uh, it had become a Catholic religion. Like I can hear outside right now my window here, someone is cutting grass on the Sabbath. <laughs> but anyway, to, they're, they're supposed to work. This is what you're taught to do. It's what, you know, that everyone that grows up, and, and if you're not Jewish, you're taught to break the Sabbath. Now, it's not like you're, they're, they're, everybody's going into your head and say, oh, by the way, you know, don't keep Saturday. Make sure you do something on Saturday. But everybody is taught inadvertently that the Sabbath day really is just a day of revelry, excitement, uh, go out and party, get drunk, uh, um, you know, football games and everything else. So that's what they do with it. Anyway, let's take a look at the Word of God and see what the Word of God has to say with it, say about this. And I'm going to be kind to the brothers and sisters that use King James because I know uh, sometimes I'll go to read from a Jewish translation and, and you guys will be like, where in the world are you reading from, Brother Steve? So I try to do that, though, for the sake of the Jewish people because when I, if I do it from King James, they're like, where are you reading from? <laughs> so, all right, let's go. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. It is the commandment of God, the Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. All right, now, how many people do you know that when you ask the question, are, do you keep the Sabbath day? And, and they'll say, excuse me, not Sabbath day, but do you keep the Ten Commandments? Oh, yes, I keep the Ten Commandments. Our church, we keep the Ten Commandments. Everybody claims they keep the Ten Commandments. Well, you know, it's funny. The one about the Sabbath is always thrown out the door. Or maybe it's been replaced. I, I don't know what they're doing, but they totally, the, 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 the seventh day is totally thrown out. And by the way, so you'll understand as far as days here, you know, I haven't done, um, and I know I've, I've read about this before, where we get the days of the week on the Gregorian calendar. But let me tell you about the days of the week on the Jewish calendar. Our first day is Yom Rishon. Yom Rishon means the first day. That's what it means. The second day is Yom Shine, Yom Shlishi, Yom Revi'i, Yom Shishi, day six, Yom Shabbat, day seven, Shavua. See? Uh, but Shabbat is the seventh day, it's the day of rest. But our days are actually numbers Rishon, Shine, Shlishi, Revi'i, Shishi. All these are numbers. It's just done for the, for the sake of the days of the week. We, we don't have uh, Sunday. Isn't it funny? Sunday. See, it's not S-O-N-D-A-Y, so there's no honor to God. Sunday is literally like, just like Constantine said, you know. Let me just kind of go back to that again, because you got to think about it. It's really interesting about this right here. Sunday, what does is, what is he say? On the venerable day of the sun. And that's where we get Sunday. 
I don't know. Like I said, I haven't looked at it in a long time. What is Monday? Maybe it's Moon Day. I don't know. But you guys, you, you can... I can't see chat because I'm busy on what I'm doing here, but uh, maybe y'all can talk about that in the chat, what Monday is and what these days represent. Okay, Exodus chapter 31, verse 14. Let's look at it a little deeper. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, it is a holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall be surely put to death. I mean, look how serious God looks at this. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. I mean, God takes it so seriously that the people are put to death. They break the Sabbath. Come, come on. Exodus 31, 16. Let's look at another one. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. By the way, the way perpetual is never ending. There's no end to the Sabbath. It is a perpetual covenant. In Leviticus 23, 24, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. Now, this is a very interesting one, and I don't have time to go into it, uh, this particular meeting here but there is a place in the Christian text in the Bible there by the writing I believe it was Paul where he comes to uh, to the people on the first day and it makes it looks look like that is speaking because first day in Hebrew remember is Yom Rishon and it makes it look like that he's keeping Sunday as a Sabbath day but in Leviticus 23 we have a Sabbath in other words and this actually happened when Paul was speaking on this, which is during the time of Passover. You have to understand, when the Passover comes, for example, it's another one. Now, this is the seventh month. This is the Pentecost. But in, in the Sabbath period, not Pentecost, I'm sorry. We, I don't want to get mixed up here. But anyway, but during the, during the Sabbath period from, um, excuse me, Passover, not the Sabbath, but during the Passover period, that whole time period that we have is called a Sabbath. So, Sunday, or not, excuse me, uh, Yom Rishon, Yom uh, Shanae, Yom Shlishi, Yom Revi'i, Yom Shishi, Yom Shabbat, all these are considered a Sabbath. It's also the same way as, according to Leviticus 23, in the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of the trumpets. Why is it called a Sabbath? Because there are certain times we do not work. It doesn't matter what day of the week it is. Like Yom Kippur is another one. Yom Kippur is a Sabbath. We are not allowed to work on Yom Kippur. We are not allowed to work on Yom Sukkot. Again, it, it, Yom Sukkot, especially in the days we're living in now in the Gregorian calendar, is not going to fall on a Shabbat, on a Sabbath day. So a lot of times in the Jewish way of, of things that happen, are, are, we have events that it's all called a Sabbath because still God looks at this as a word for rest. And so therefore we're to keep these things as a Sabbath. In other words, it's the same thing as a Sabbath day, but it's an actual time period here. So in the seventh month of the first day of the month shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial blowing of trumpets and holy convocation, the Feast of Trumpets. Okay, so this is during, in, in, in our days now, it's like generally around September, October, that time period there is when the Feast of uh, Trumpets takes place. That is a Sabbath as well. Isaiah 56, 6, another very interesting one here. All, also, the sons of the stranger. And I wanted to read this one to you. There's many, many. There's like 120 uh, scriptures, roughly, something like that, that deal just with the Sabbath alone, okay? But this one here includes the Gentiles here. Also, the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve Him and to love the name of the Lord. This is Hashem. This is God's divine name to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and to take hold of my covenant. So see, as, as the Christian believers, you have joined the covenant of Israel because Yeshua is the covenant of Israel. And so therefore, he tells you to keep the Sabbath because you have, you have joined in, you've become part of Israel. Now some people might say, well, you know, Brother Steve, that's just the Old Testament. You know, God looks at everything as the Word of God. It's not just old and new. 
I mean, I do know there's a scripture that talks about, you know, the testator when he, is, he dies and there's need for a new covenant, okay? All right, I understand that. But you're going to see what I mean when I say this. Let's look at Isaiah 58, 13. If thou turn away thy foot from, from the Sabbath, from doing thy doing from doing thy pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasures, nor speak thine own words. The Sabbath day is such a sacred and holy day. This is a time that, you know, I mean, we're not, we're not going to the beach. Uh, we're not going to the mall shopping and stuff like that. And I know there's a lot of people that do it. I'm not, I'm not condemning you if you do these things because I realize many people, they have no idea these things. What I'm trying to show you, though, is this is not God's desire. It's not God's will that we do things like this. You know? I, I, I mean, years ago, before I began to serve the Lord, sure, I did the same things. No different than you guys or anybody else. You know, but once we begin to know to do right and to do it not, that is sin at that point there. So the point is, is we should honor the Sabbath day, you know, and if you, uh, quite honestly, you want to go have fun and everything, do it on Sunday. You know, you got to work, go do it on Sunday. Now, true, as the Bible says, if the ox is in the ditch, won't your neighbor help, help him get it out? Or to do good works, in other words, like Jesus, healing of the sick, things like that. Sure. But technically, you can find nothing where Jesus did not keep the Sabbath. He kept the Sabbath. You see? But now, according to the laws that Judaism had made up, the oral law, yeah, he broke oral law, sure. But when it comes to the commandment of Moses that God had given Moses, he didn't break anything. As he said, he's Lord of the Sabbath. So anyway, now we're going to get a little bit into the, uh, into the Christian Bible and looking at some of the passages here. But before I start on this, uh, no, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm going to do the one here in Mark chapter 6 to start with. So if you have your Bible want to turn to that Mark 6 Chapter 6, verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Now notice, Jesus taught also on the Sabbath day, right? Now, like I said, though, let me, let me uh, before I go a little further, though, because I'm actually going to go into the apostles at this point here. But I want, to, I want to take a couple of scriptures first before I actually give the scriptures where Paul keeps the Sabbath day, the apostles keep the Sabbath day. And I want to share with you some of the arguments. Example, Acts 20. In Acts chapter 20, verse 7, it says, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. All right? Now, this is one of those places where it looks like Paul's holding a Sunday worship service. See, you have to remember, though, a couple of things that are very important. And if you're looking in a King James Bible, if you'll notice in your Bible, the word day is italicized. It's in italics. It's not actually in the original text. All right? The word week in the Greek is sabaton. It's not like what you would think. You see, a sabaton or a Sabbath, according to this, which that's according to your Strong's Greek uh, concordance there. The noun Sabbath is often used after numerals in the significance of a week. All right, like we have here in, in, in uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 7. The Greek text behind this phrase, therefore, literally reads, and upon the first of the Sabbaths. So see, when you begin to, to really research the words that are there or to see what's actually written there, this is when we find out the meaning is totally, can be totally twisted around. And it's so easy. And now, let me, let me just say this as I, as, I'm, as I make these comments here. These are things that you guys yourself can easily find out. But I also find another problem that happens that's very discouraging 
we will have people that because of these little issues here and there in the Bible that a word gets added. Now, you have to keep in mind, when I say added, generally, it's always italicized. But what happens is translators are assuming what maybe the, the sentence should read, mainly because whatever doctrinal background they've come in down through the ages influences what they're writing. But some people get really nervous about that, and they think, gosh, we need to learn Greek, and we need to learn Hebrew, and that's the way we'll know the Bible. It doesn't matter if you really know Greek or if you know Hebrew because the Jews know Hebrew very well and they still do not recognize who Mashiach really is. So does knowing Hebrew help them anymore? No, it does not. So that's not what we need to do. What we need to do is be in prayer. And some people even have the idea, well, <laughs> I'm just not going to read the Bible anymore. You can't trust it. No, the Bible itself, I don't care how many little issues here and there are there are you know the mistakes that are made by translators the word of god is still the word of god and the and, and the message of salvation is still there and and you can take and actually um through what you're seeing here you can 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 be just uh you can get saved anything with the word of god can be totally no problems whatsoever you know it's not, it's, God's not going to hold you responsible if you're reading something that's mistranslated and you just don't know any better, you know. But we are supposed to search the scriptures. We're supposed to study to see. And when you do see words that are italicized in, in your Bible and stuff, check it out. Search it out for yourself. Try to find out why is that word italicized. In some cases, we need that extra word because in the English language, the sentence wouldn't make any sense if we didn't have the word italicized in there. But in, the, in, a, in other cases, though, you have words that are italicized that are there that really make no sense whatsoever. They're, they're, they're totally, they're, they're no good to us. And, and they pervert what's trying to be said there. So this is why we want to do that. All right, let's kind of move on here. Um, I don't want to keep you guys too, too long here. So let me just kind of go through this a little bit more rapid here. So, so the question comes down to, so let's, let's go on now. So, all right. Um, another interesting argument is from Romans 14, verse 5. This is what we were talking about earlier. One man esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Now, Romans 14, this is really odd because people automatically make that look like, well, if you want to keep the Sabbath, keep the Sabbath. But if you don't want to keep the Sabbath, then don't keep the Sabbath. You really need to read the entire chapter. Now, I realize, and I've showed you guys many times before it, Yeshua, for example, when Jesus read Isaiah 61, he reads verse 1, half of verse 2, and then he closes the book and puts it down. He said, this day this scripture is fulfilled. That is understandable because there are a lot of places where one verse or half of a verse even may apply only to what's happening at that point. But in some cases, especially in simple teachings like this, such as Romans 14, chapter 14 here, verse 5, where we read in here, one man esteems one day above another, another esteems every day alike. You really need to read everything there because if you'll notice Romans chapter 14, the whole chapter is dealing with dietary issues. So the only thing that's going on here is that the day is not dealing with a Sabbath. The day is dealing with, with the issues that they're, that they're dealing over this eating here. See, see, Paul is addressing a people here who have, who have never been converted to the knowledge of, 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 of Hashem. Uh, so who is he talking to in the, to begin with? He's talking to the Galatians. And you have to understand the Galatians were a paganistic people and they had all kinds of doctrines to begin with. So, um, gosh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm actually taking you on another area before I get to the, before I, before I finish this. Anyway, Romans, though, when Romans deals with the eating, Romans is, the whole book of Romans is just dealing with the eating habits here. So I'm sitting here looking at my notes because I didn't want to get mixed up with you guys on this. So forgive me there. Let's, let's, 
Let's get, let me get back on track here. Romans chapter 14, though, like I said, if you read the entire chapter, you realize that the day that is being esteemed has nothing to do with the Sabbath. It is strictly dealing with eating issues there. Now, another argument, Galatians chapter 4, verses 9 to 11. Let me read you this here. But now after that you have known Elohim, or rather are known of Elohim, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and times and years. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. That's what I was actually fixing to speak to you about. <laughs> then I got a little sidetracked there. The Galatian people were pagans to begin with. They're not Jewish people. And so when Paul is speaking here, you observe days and months and times and years, immediately what happens is we're thinking that Paul is only speaking to a Jewish audience and that, oh, they're, they're keeping the Sabbath and they're doing this and they're doing that. No, the months, see, get it? The days and the months. Why? Because in the in Jewish way of uh, of life. The Sabbath is the important day of the week. The months, yes, there are certain months that are important because we have Passover, we have Sukkot, we have uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, um, you know, we have the Feast of Trumpets, basically covers that whole area there. We have uh, uh, the Feast of Pentecost, you know, uh, the Shavuot. Uh, but the thing is, is Paul is not addressing that type of people. Paul is dealing with the Galatians who were unconverted. They had just come to the knowledge of, of, of Hashem. And, you know, to begin with, Galatians, by the way, their name comes from the word gall or bitterness. Um, and they were, they're, they're Celtic people. They're from ancient France and Belgium is the area that they were from. Uh, they had come down in, you know, migrated into Asia Minor and they were the first... Uh, ones to, to, to be evangelized and to, and to, to what the Word of God was. But after they had been converted and they knew that Hashem was God, you know, they're starting to revert back into their paganistic traditions there. And so, you know, Paul sees that and the, the superstitious worships of the way, which, which they have. And so he, when he says the weak and beggarly elements... In, in verse 3, these Galatians were being in, uh, in, indoctrinated by Judaizers who no doubt were confused. The Judaizers who had who'd come among them teaching physical circumcision and other rituals of the law, which Paul had said are not necessary for salvation. Paul addresses those holding uh, this doctrine in Acts 4.21. As a result of their bewilderment, some were returning to their heathen worship of the mother deity uh, Agadith. I can't even say the name, Agadistus, and perhaps sacrificing humans once again, which was part of their, was part of their practice, as well observe, observing their own days and months and times and years in the place of Hashem's commandment, observances, see, observances. So the thing is, is it has nothing to do with, with the practices that God had laid in the Word. So in other words, it was not the Jewish people that they were doing, but the Jewish... So Jewish people, though, were trying to convince them of keeping things, um, you know, that, in fact, as we know the, the story, and I don't want to get sidetracked here, but as we know the story here, you know, they do come together, Paul and, and some of the other apostles, they come together dealing with the issues of certain laws that we have in Judaism, whether or not this should be put upon the Gentiles. And they said, you know, let them abstain from blood and et cetera, but let's put no, no greater burdens upon them. Because a lot of the burdens that, that we have were difficult. And so therefore the Gentiles are not subject to some of the laws that the Jewish people are under. But when it comes to things like the Sabbath, we clearly have the record here, as I read to you already in, in Isaiah 56, 6, that if the stranger comes in among you, you know that they're to observe, they're to keep the Sabbath as well. So it is for the Gentiles. Now, here's what I'd like to uh, show you, share with you is some of the actual scriptures. And you guys can easily, you can look up these scriptures. Like I said, there's about 120, I think it's 117 places in the Bible where the Sabbath is spoken about. But let's look here. Actually, more than that. That's just some of the ones that I've actually looked at myself. Uh, Acts chapter 15, verse 21. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. 
So the reading of the Torah on the Sabbath was always done every Sabbath day. It was part of that, that pro process there. And um, in fact, we will do likewise here. I, well, gosh. Mm. Uh, I don't have a Torah close enough to me to be able to read to you in Hebrew. Maybe, maybe I can. Maybe I can. We'll, we'll, we'll check. We'll do that because we should keep that part of the word of God as well. Acts 18 verse 4. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews. See, there's Paul every Sabbath day. He's in the synagogue. All right. So um, in Mark chapter 6, verse 2, when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished. This is Yeshua here, Jesus, saying, from whence is this man uh, these things? See, he teaches on the Sabbath day in the synagogue. All right. Acts 17, verse 2, and Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Acts 13, 44. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Acts 18, 4. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath day and was persuaded by the Jews and the Greeks. So you see, the Sabbath is kept by God. It is something that we should do. And it's something that if we know to do it, even the more we should try to keep God's Sabbath day. All right, let's take, as we close, I would like to read with you the Torah reading as it was customary to do. And we want to keep this as well. Um, and we actually read uh, from Barashit and Genesis the other day. <clears throat> and if I remember right, we read two of the verses. And maybe this is what we'll do. We'll actually just go through these particular verses in Genesis. So, now, in, so we're going to actually go to the third verse, which would be Gimel in Hebrew. And what I'll do to make sure you guys can understand it, I won't translate it myself. I'll give you the King James Version as I read this to you in the Hebrew language. So, as we prepare to close here, let's do the Torah reading together. And, okay. Ve'yomer Elohim, Yahior, Ve'yahior, Ve'yorei Elohim et ha'or kitov, Ve'yavdil Elohim ben ha'or o ben ha'choshek, Ve'yekara Elohim la'or yom Lachoshek kara laila. Vayihi erev verihi vokiar yom echad. Let's go ahead and go down also to the next verse because for some reason I feel like that we did read this on the last uh, Shabbat service. So let's go ahead and go a little further in Vet. Let me go ahead and translate though that for you there. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light. And the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Excuse me, God called the light day. I'm sorry, I didn't get that right for you. Now we're going to go to verse 6, okay? And we'll read from there and go a little further. V'yomar Elohim yahi rekia betoch ha-mayim, v'yahi mavdil ben mayim la-mayim. V'yasa Elohim et ha-rekia v'yavdil ben ha-mayim asha Matachat la lavakia veyaven umaim asha me al lavakia veyahiken veyekra elohim lavakia shemaim veyahi erev veyahi voker yom shene. This is speaking about the creation. Uh, where he divides the waters and, and he makes the day and stuff. So as we go down, verse 6, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. 
God bless you so richly for coming and being a part of this Shabbat service. I trust it's been a blessing for you. And we'll take, uh, I won't say necessarily next Shabbat service, but we will take and we will go deeper into some of this. In fact, what I'll do is I'll kind of wait. If you guys have got questions about the Sabbath, uh, or if there's something in the scripture that you're not really sure about and you would like to bring that to our attention that we can maybe answer, we'll try to bring that up in the next uh, Shabbat service next week at 11 a.m. Uh, but we'll be doing a different teaching that day, but I will try to answer any questions that you might have on it. So email us at uh, IsraelReturns at AOL.com or you can go to our new email address, which is contact at IsraelReturns.com. God bless you. We love you. And may the peace of Hashem be upon you. Baruch Hashem and Baruch Shabbat. Blessed is the Sabbath. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.